In this video, we are going to explain and visualize the notion of Lyapunov stability. Lyapunov stability is one of the most important concepts in control theory. It is related to our ability to maintain the behavior of a system in a desired operating condition. Its importance follows from the fact that a system is anything in the universe, real or artificial, that evolves with time, like for instance a metronome, a robot, or an oscillating bridge. Lyapunov stability tells us if our system is going to behave as desired, or if it is going to misbehave and potentially blow up. Lyapunov stability is a beautiful and elegant mathematical theory, which has a wonderful graphical interpretation. For this reason, in this video, we will explain this concept graphically. Before being able to visualize such a notion and explain why a robot may find its desired position back after being hit, or why, on the other hand, a bridge may collapse, we need to introduce some language to make this concept precise. We begin with a mathematical representation of our system. We use an ordinary differential equation, ODE for short, to represent the system. Here, x of t is a vector of dimension n that takes real values. x is called the state of the system. F is a function that maps from vectors of reals of dimension n to vectors of reals of dimension n. Dot x is a shorthand notation for the derivative of x with respect to time. This means that the notation dot x equal to f of x is in reality a compact notation that we can expand and write explicitly as a system of n ordinary differential equations in n variables, corresponding to the components of the vector x. Finally, we define the concept of solution of the system as follows. A differentiable function x that maps uh, an interval of time from t0 representing the initial time to tf representing the final time to rn is a solution if it satisfies the differential equation for all times in the interval t0, tf. To make this language more clear, we look at a simple example. We consider the so-called harmonic oscillator, a system described by a differential equation of the second order. This can be rewritten as a system of first order ODEs by defining x1 as the position and x2 as the velocity. We also set the angular frequency equal to 1 for simplicity. This selection results in the system of first order ODEs dot x1 equal to x2 and dot x2 equal to minus x1. Without going into further details, it is possible to show that the solution of this system for this particular selection of initial states is given by the expression on the screen involving cosines and sines. You can verify this by taking the derivatives of the solutions x1 and x2 with respect to time to see that they satisfy the equation of the system. We can plot the components of the solution with respect to time, obtaining these two graphs. These graphs are called time histories of x of t. To be precise, we define a time history of the component uh, xi as the set of points visited by the collection t, xi of t, as a function of time starting from x of 0. Practically, this indicates the plots we see here. In addition to time histories, there are other important concepts related to the solution of a system. The next one that we see is that of trajectory. A trajectory is the set of points visited by x of t as a function of time starting from x of 0. This is represented by the orange graph at the top. The graph of the trajectory is on the x1, x2 plane. We can also clearly see the relation that exists between trajectories and time histories, as the time histories are the components of the trajectories together with time. A trajectory is very useful in showing how the solution evolves. But a trajectory is limited in that it shows the solution only for one particular initial condition. If we want to see the behavior of the solution for multiple initial conditions, 
then we can simply consider multiple trajectories, each one initialized from a different initial condition. The resulting plot is called phase portrait, which is an important tool to understand what Lyapunov stability is. But before going there, there are still two important concepts that we need to introduce. We have seen that the time history gives information about one component of the solution and time, while trajectories give information about how one component evolves with respect to another. But a drawback of trajectories is that they do not explicitly show how the solution X evolves with respect to time. In other words, trajectories lack the explicit collections of time instants. So what happens if we add time to trajectories? To do so, we need to consider a three-dimensional graph with axes x1, x2, and t. The resulting object that we see here is called motion. A motion is defined as the set of points visited by t, x of t, as a function of time starting from x of zero. It is important to realize that motions, trajectories, and time histories are all related to one another. We have already seen the relation between trajectories and time histories. Similarly, if we project the motion over the x1, x2 plane, we obtain a trajectory. One important aspect to note is that the different motions may have the same trajectory. For instance, here, the motion for time going from 0 to pi has the same trajectory as the motion for time going from 0 to, to pi. If instead we project the motion over the x2 t plane, we obtain the time history of x2. And if we project the motion over the x1 t plane, we obtain the time history of x1. The final important concept that we need to introduce is that of equilibrium point of the system. A state xe is an equilibrium of the system if a trajectory that starts at xe will stay at xe forever. If we consider a system described by the ordinary differential equation dot x of t equal to f of x t, then an equilibrium is any point x e that satisfies the condition zero equal to f of x e, which means that an equilibrium is a solution of the system with the property that its derivative with respect to time is zero. This because, by definition of derivative, such a point is a stationary point, meaning that the solution does not move at that point. For instance, if we consider the harmonic oscillator and we want to determine the equilibrium points of such a system, we set the derivative equal to zero and we find that the point x1 equal to zero and x2 equal to zero is the only equilibrium point of the harmonic oscillator. We can plot the trajectory, the motion, and the time history corresponding to such equilibrium point. We see that an equilibrium point is a trajectory composed of just one point, while as a motion, this is a semi-line. Correspondingly, the time histories are the components of the motion on the x1 t and the x2 t planes. Now that we have introduced all the required language, we can finally explain the notion of Lyapunov stability. The objective of stability theory is to establish properties of motions subject to perturbations in the initial state. Consider a nominal trajectory xn of t starting from xn of 0 and a perturbed trajectory xp of t starting from xp of 0. We call the quantity xp of 0 minus xn of 0 initial perturbation, while xp of t minus xn of t is the perturbation at time t. We want to find the relation between the norm of xp of t minus xn of t and the norm of xp of 0 minus xn of 0, where the norm essentially indicates the distance between these two points. In the following, we will focus on the case in which the nominal trajectory is an equilibrium point xe. First, let me give you the formal definition of Lyapunov stability of an equilibrium point. Then, I will explain this seemingly complicated mathematical expression visually. The equilibrium Xe is stable in the sense of Lyapunov if for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta of epsilon such that if the initial perturbation is less than delta, then the perturbation is less than epsilon for all times t. The first distance condition is indicated as the norm of x of zero minus Xe less than delta. Similarly, the second distance condition 
is indicated as the norm of x of t minus xc less than epsilon. Let's see what this means graphically. For simplicity, we consider the case in which the origin zero of the plot is the equilibrium point that we want to test, like in the case of the harmonic oscillator that we saw before. In this case, in which the equilibrium point is zero, the conditions simplify as on the screen. For the time being, let's ignore the wording for every and there exist. Let's first focus on the following. Given a delta and an epsilon, what does norm of x of zero less than delta and norm of x of t less than epsilon for all times t mean graphically? We start by selecting one epsilon, which defines a distance from the origin represented by the orange circle. Similarly, let's consider a specific delta, which defines a distance from the origin represented by the blue circle. Then we consider an initial state x of zero within the delta circle. We trace the trajectory x of t, and we see that the trajectory remains within the orange circle for all times. So we have found that for one particular epsilon, we have a delta that for one particular x of zero inside the blue circle, x of t stays inside the orange circle forever. The problem, however, is that we consider the only one epsilon and only one initial state x of zero. But the definition requires that this holds for all epsilons and for all x of zero that starts in the blue circle. So now, instead of using only one trajectory, let's consider the phase portrait of this system. We represent multiple trajectories, and we can now clearly see the shape of the phase portrait. For now, we still consider one epsilon. Given this one epsilon, we can find a delta with the property that all trajectories that start in the blue circle stay in the orange circle for all times. And these trajectories are indicated in green here. So we have shown that given one epsilon, the origin zero is such that we can find a delta such that if the norm of x of zero is less than delta, then the norm of x of t is less than epsilon for all times t. What is left to check is that this holds for any arbitrary epsilon. So now we consider another epsilon, a smaller one for instance. We can easily see that we can still find a delta, a smaller one, such that if the trajectory starts in the blue circle, it stays in the orange circle forever. The epsilon delta requirement for stability takes a challenge answer form. To demonstrate that the equilibrium point is stable, for any value of epsilon that a challenger may provide, we must produce a value of delta, possibly dependent on epsilon, such that a trajectory starting a delta close to the equilibrium point will never leave the epsilon ball. To understand the utility of Lyapunov stability, let's consider again the flower-shaped system, which has an equilibrium at the origin, which is Lyapunov stable. What does Lyapunov stability imply in practice? We indicate the epsilon circle in orange and the delta circle in blue. The equilibrium point, which is at the origin of the plot and it is indicated in red, represents the desired motion of the system. But what happens if there is a perturbation of the initial condition xp of zero and we have a perturbed trajectory? If we look at the corresponding motions, we can see that Lyapunov stability guarantees that the perturbed motion will never go far away from the desired motion, as long as the initial perturbed the initial state, xp of zero, was not too far. At this point, the practical importance of Lyapunov stability should be clear. If the desired position of a robot, the desired temperature in a room, or the desired velocity of a car are stable, we have the guarantee that any small disturbance or perturbation will only lead to a small deviation from the desired motion. Yet, stability does not seem to be enough. It only tells us that the perturbed motion will evolve close to the desired motion. However, in practical applications, we would also wish that the perturbed motion converges back towards the desired motion. For instance, if we want an oven to be at 180 degrees, and opening and closing the door makes it drop at 170 degrees, we will not be satisfied with staying at 170. We want that eventually the temperature of the oven goes back to the desired temperature of 180. The second property is called attractivity. An equilibrium point, Xe, is attractive 
If there exists a delta A such that all the trajectories that start delta A close to the equilibrium point will eventually converge to the equilibrium point. The region inside the yellow boundary is called a region of attraction, as all the initial states in this region generate a motion that will be attracted to the equilibrium point. We already saw that an equilibrium can be stable but not attractive. Likewise, an equilibrium can be attractive but not stable. The second fact is not easy to imagine, but can be illustrated with an example. We consider a system with a discrete clock. If the current state is less than 1, then the state will double. If the state is greater than 1, then the next state will become 0. This system has an equilibrium point at 0. We now check that for this system, 0 is an attractive equilibrium point. To do so, we place the delta A boundary at 1, and we select an initial condition within the boundary. At every step, the state doubles and eventually the state becomes bigger than 1. At the next step, the state will become 0, and from then on, the state will stay at 0, as the double of 0 is 0. Since this behavior will happen for all x of 0, starting within the delta A ball, the origin is attractive. However, the origin is not stable. If we select the epsilon ball around 1, then no matter how we select the delta ball, we can always find at least an initial state x of 0 starting within the delta ball that will eventually go out of the epsilon ball. Note that it doesn't matter that eventually the motion will go back to 0. The fact that any perturbed motion will go far away from the origin no matter how close it starts to the desired motion, indicates that the origin is not stable. Practically, this is important. Imagine that you are in a biological laboratory and we have a fridge with sensitive specimens that need to be at exactly 4 degrees and that will die if the temperature reaches 5 degrees. In this case, you cannot allow that a small perturbation, let's say of 0.1 degrees, will produce a temperature that momentarily will grow to be above 5 degrees, even though eventually it will go back to 4 degrees. Finally, if we have an equilibrium point that is both Lyapunov stable and attractive, any perturbed motion starting close to the desired motion will, by Lyapunov stability, always stay close to the desired motion and by attractivity, eventually go back to the desired motion. In this case, we said that the equilibrium point is asymptotically stable. It should be clear now why Lyapunov stability, and in particular asymptotic stability, is so important. Asymptotic stability guarantees that your device, whatever that may be, behaves in a desired way by being robust to unwanted and unpredictable perturbations. The primary objective of control engineering is to make sure that the desired equilibrium point of any of our devices is asymptotically stable.